two, one, main engine start, and we have liftoff. Greetings and welcome to a brand new series of Kerbal Space Program, Juno 1 and a bit. Oh yes, we are back with the Kerbals as they embark on a new endeavour. No simple return trip to the Mun, oh no. In this mission, the Kerbals are going to attempt nothing less than to become a multi-planet civilization. Oh yes, they are embarking on this endeavour not as a government agency, but as a group of private individuals backed by some of the some of Kerbal's most experienced and highly qualified television producers, who will of course televise the entire thing as one big reality TV show. Which of course will provide all the funding they need in order to launch the rockets. Of course it's not a huge amount of funding, and so launches launch opportunities will be limited, the number of launches will be strictly capped. Um, and there will be various other considerations that we will need to take into account. First, of course, amongst those is we are going to need some Kerbinauts in order to lead this mission and ultimately take us to Duna. So, uh, well, first let's pick our flag. Um, I have a specially created flag here. There we go. And now let's head into the astronaut complex. Um, these, of course, are the government Kerbinauts uh, that we are all familiar with. Jeb. Bill, Bob and Valentina. Unfortunately, none of them will be coming with us because they are, of course, are government official Kerbinauts and we are looking for private individuals, private citizens, and we have a very extensive and rigorous selection criteria that we are now going to employ. And that shall be... Well, he looks good, doesn't he? Uh, we'll have him. He can be the test pilot for uh, for the program. His the, his high courage and lack of stupidity makes him perfect for that kind of scenario. And uh, of course, we will also need scientists, engineers, uh, and all sorts of other people. Uh, who have we got here? How about this guy here? Look, Juggly Kerman. Actually, it's a lady. <laughs> the lady, Juggly Kerman. Uh, Gemby Kerman looks good to me. We'll take that one. Uh, as I said, a very rigorous. And uh, and complicated selection criteria. And look, there we go. We'll, we'll take Lena Kerman as well. Fantastic. There you go. That is, you, are, you may well now be looking upon the first four Kerbals on Duna. These, these could be the founders of a new colony. Three ladies and a man. The man... Uh, uh, Bill? What are you... No, Bill, you you are not allowed to come. I'm sorry, you're a government Kerbinaut. I know you just heard me suggesting that there was going to be three Kerb ladies to every Kerb guy, but that is no reason. Patlas, you are the man to, uh, to lead this first mission. All right, let's head over to the vehicle assembly building, and we will start to, uh, to put together the hardware we are going to need to embark on this mission. Alright, so we're going to need ourselves a heavy launch vehicle and we're going to need to do some testing and stuff in order to get this endeavour off the ground. Um, we're only going to allow ourselves three launches in the first year. We're not a very well-funded uh, organisation, I'm afraid. And uh, therefore we have limited finances and until the television revenues start rolling in from the various coverage components, um, then uh, we're just going to have to make do with the launches that we can afford now. The first transfer opportunity for Juno will of course be happening this year, so we'll need to set an alarm for that and we are obviously going to aim to to hit that launch window. We've got three launches prior to then to prepare our, all of the technology that we need to, uh, to send our first batch of Kerbals and to hope that they survive. Right, so let's set this transfer uh, reminder. We've got Kerbin and of course Juno is the target. That is going to happen in 230 days or day 231 of year one. Uh, if we set our margin to, what, should we say 48 hours? Um, that should give us, I'm not quite sure how long a Kerbin day is, but well, there you go, look, it's like 8 days, it's 48 hours. Um, that should give us plenty of time to prepare and launch our vehicle, uh, as long as we have done the necessary prep work before that comes around. Of course, the TV producers will be instrumental in ensuring that we have the right engineering solutions to, uh, to get us to our target. Good stuff. Right, so we have three launches to uh, prepare ourselves. We're going to have a minimum period of uh, sort of a couple of months before between each launch. Um, we'll allow ourselves more launches next time around, especially if we have a successful mission next year of the program. But this year we have very limited financing. This is a project which is funded by uh, Kerbal TV and uh, and a few wealthy philanthropists. So uh, So the budget is pretty tight. But that is not going to stop us. That is not going to hold us back. Oh, no. First things first. 
we've got a few mods and we need to bear these in mind. So we've got uh, the uh, Umbra Space Industries is going to provide all of the actual colonization bits and pieces that we need. So it's got a life support system built into it, or rather you can get a life support system. It's got a life support system that works with it, the, U, uh, the USI life support system. We've also got um, various sort of various modules that we can use to build up our base on the surface and we were gonna we're gonna need to do some experimenting with this this is probably going to be the subject of launch number two we might do a quick test on the mun but launch number one is to develop and uh, find out basically how long our life support systems are going to last uh, when we're not using regenerative means. So we're going to put together this research station. We've got a Capola command module on the top, hitchhiker storage container to give us room for our four Kerbal crews, which is going to be the size, the intended size for our Kerbal crews uh, for the Duna missions. Underneath that, I mean, we, we were sort of debating what else to put on it, but basically we're going to need um, a life support tank. So we're going to stick a life support tank under there. So this first mission is literally just going to be surviving off of stored life support. Then we've got an RCS fuel tank for reaction control system. And of course a main fuel tank and a main engine for orbital insertion and on orbit maneuvers, large scale on orbit maneuvers. We put a survey scanner on top uh, because we don't know what it does. We name it the Wizard Star 1 R&D Station. Uh, we add the one. There you go. Look, we've added the one. Wizard Star One R&D Station. Um, what else do we need on this thing? Right. Well, we need some uh, aerials potentially to communicate information back down to the ground. So we stick a bunch of uh, a bunch of aerials on there. Other scientific stuff, instruments. We put this little like whatever it is. It's like a it's like a telescope or something. I think it's for finding landing zones. Um, it may be useful at Duna, who knows? We also put this narrowband scanner on because it might do something. I mean, we, it, our, you know, our highly skilled and experienced television producers sadly don't actually know how most of this stuff works. So this is going to be a real research and development mission. This is this is actually a case of me learning how to, a lot of these things work because I haven't played this game in a very, very long time. And so, uh, and so I need to kind of, you know, re-familiarize myself with many of its systems. Um, we've got obviously uh, we've also got some um, solar panels on there as well and then I've added this just so that we can expand it out and also to increase the weight so that this is because the main part of this mission actually as well is to test a heavy launch vehicle design so we need a fairly heavy thing to launch on that heavy launch vehicle in order to properly test it uh, also despite the protestations of our highly trained and experienced television producers that it is more dramatic to launch a vehicle with no form of escape possible in the event of failure we in the end decide actually that it is perhaps a little bit unfair on our Kerbal crew and, and perhaps it would be a bit catastrophic to the whole project if we were to immediately lose the first four Kerbonauts um, in, a, in a launch mishap so we decide to build at least some form of emergency escape both for during the ascent and of course if we have some kind of problem on orbit for example running out of life support and an inability to launch to it so um, so I designed these Frankly, I don't know if they're actually, you know, would stand any real chance of succeeding or not, uh, but they are escape pods of some sort, uh, and each can carry two Kerbals. So, uh, as you can see, I've built one on one side, and then in order to, to balance it, oh yeah, it needs parachutes. We stick a couple of parachutes on. In order to balance this, of course, we're going to duplicate this on both sides. It also means that we now have two docking ports on our space station. So if we want to cycle crews, attach any extra modules to the space station or whatever, we can just take one of these away and, uh, and do that and attach what we need. So it's looking pretty good. I think that is, that is more or less the R&D station complete and ready to launch and of course to launch we need a heavy lift launch vehicle and we also need uh, actually to encompass this thing in a launch shroud to make sure that we can actually fit it so we do we get our launch shroud and uh, after a lot of faffing about we managed to successfully get it to completely cover the launch vehicle some more faffing about obviously is required and there we go it is now completely it's it's kind of you know slightly bulbous and ridiculous looking um but it does explode out nicely when we want to do stuff in there which is just plain lovely isn't it it's absolutely lovely however that is the payload now we need to build the rocket the wizard x heavy launch vehicle which will be the workhorse of this this endeavor to uh, hurl Kerbals all the way to Duna. In order to do that, we're going to go big. Uh, we're gonna, just going to go straight to the maximum 3.75 meter parts. Um, now, historically, I've only ever had these done in stacks of three, but I think I'm going to go to a stack of four um, and see how it goes. We'll chuck on the main engines, of course, the uh, the big old engines 
biggest engines there are in the game, as far as I'm concerned, um, or as far as I know, in the, in the stock game, anyway. Um, now we're going to, you know, this on its own is not going to be enough, so we get our decouplers, we're going to chuck uh, four liquid-fueled booster stages on the side, um, and we'll, uh, we'll add extra fuel tanks to those, obviously. I mess around a little bit trying to see if I can get them um, like swooping in nicely to the main body, but I can't, so I just extend them slightly further and chuck uh, chuck cones on the top. And there we have it. Um, strut everything up to try and increase rigidity. As it turns out, um, you know, strut well, strutting is very important. Uh, anybody who's played Kerbal Space Program will probably know how important strutting is, and I have not strutted an awful lot. Um, we're going to add some uh, some separatrons just so that we don't hopefully get collisions when these uh, stages separate, as they are pretty sizable and uh, and weighty things. And if they collide with the rocket, that's probably going to be the end of it. Um, deciding that more is always going to be better, I decide to add yet another stage of uh, of boosters. This time, some uh, solid rocket boosters attached to the liquid rocket boosters, just to give us a bit more kick off of the launch pad. Um, we're going to go for, it's not quite asparagus staging, but we're going to put some fuel lines um, so that we drain basically two fuel tanks at a time uh, and uh, and see how that goes. Our, our highly qualified TV uh, producers tell us that this is what professional rocket designers do and therefore it is what we're going to do. Um, Staging, of course, needs to be set up and this takes quite a long time um, and, uh, you know, we need to make sure that it's all in the right order. Good. I think this is all set. I may be wrong. Uh, I probably am wrong, but we've got all the solids firing, all of the main fuel firing, everything fires, everything launches initially. Then we have got separation of the solid rocket boosters. Then we've got separation of the first two fuel, the first two liquid fuel boosters along with their separatrons. Then we've got separation of the second two f uh, fueled liquid fuel boosters along with their separatrons. Uh, then we can jettison the shroud, then we can jettison the main rocket, and uh, and then we're in orbit. Uh, in theory. Then we're in orbit, he says. Confidently. Super confidently. This thing should have a ton of thrust. Uh, total weight, 816 tons. Uh, not quite a kiloton. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with, uh, with respect to that. Um, we should probably give this thing some launch clamps. Because otherwise I could see it struggling. And welcome to the Kerbal Space Center on this beautiful, beautiful day as we prepare to watch the inaugural takeoff of the Wizard X Heavy Launch Vehicle. That is correct, it is poised there on the launch pad with the uh, enormous overly large shroud atop containing the Wizard Star 1 Research and Development Station. All of this, of course, is being launched because of the Juna 1 and a bit initiative, a privately funded initiative uh, to uh, to send a reality television show to Juna and the Kerbals aboard are the first selected astronauts of that process, very carefully selected as we know from a wide field of a few. And of course the people, the Kerbals aboard, we should remember, are themselves also new to spaceflight. This is a whole series of firsts here at this on this wonderful launch day. Will it launch successfully? I have talked to the engineers and they have assured me they have done no calculations whatsoever and have no idea if it will indeed be successful. Patlas Kerman has confirmed that he is go for launch. SAS is on and engines are at full throttle up. We are moments away from launch as we approach the countdown phase and the highly trained television producers have given the final go for launch in five, four, three, Two, one, main engine start, and we have liftoff of the Wizard X heavy launch vehicle carrying the Wizard Star gracefully into the heavens. It hasn't exactly leapt off the launch pad, in fact, it is rising, but it is accelerating faster now, faster and faster, passing 100 meters per second. Telemetry indicates it is over 1,000 meters above the surface already burning through its fuel at a tremendous rate. In fact, the liquid engine second stage boosters look to be running out of fuel far faster than had been anticipated. They have throttled the engines right back in an effort to preserve the thrust as long as they can. However, those engines have now cut out. The engineers and television producers assure me that this does not matter as it simply builds tension, which is crucial for a successful television series. In fact, I'm now being ordered to tell you that this could be doomed for the entire launch and it could mean the end of it. Oh, and there we have solid rocket booster separation. 
They have burnt through their fuel and we are going to jettison, I assume, also there go the liquid fuel boosters. Uh, falling away from the main spacecraft now, accelerating away under full throttle, passing 300 meters per second and 13,000 feet. Patless Kerman is indeed beginning his gravity turn now, taking the Wizard X eastward into the horizon, across to the horizon in order to achieve orbit. And we are noticing some wobble, it seems. There is some oscillation which has been brought about as the gravity turn has begun. The oscillation is building. There, the, the tip of the rocket is all over the place. We have separation of the remaining solid liquid rocket boosters. What am I talking about? I just don't know anymore. The tension is simply too much to bear as the oscillation continues to grow. It is now reaching the level of peril. Outright peril is what it is being referred to by the television producers. And we have had engine cutoff. We have had engine cutoff. Premature engine cutoff. The, the Kerbal X is on a parabolic trajectory. Will it make orbit? Find out next time. Will the brave and highly experienced TV executives of Kerbin be able to organize and deliver on the mission? Taduna, find out as the series continues. Tomorrow, of course, is Weird Wednesday, and we will be taking a magical delve into the world of Magica.